So far you have been finding work done by force as a dot product of force and displacement when the force is constant. So this is an interesting lesson in the sense that here we'll be able to deal with forces that are variable in nature and how we can find work done by this variable force when it displaces a mass. And to understand this, what we'll do is we'll take a box and attach it to a spring with the other end of the spring attached to a rigid wall. Now, if you pull the box to the right or give it displacement in the right direction, the spring will elongate and what you'll intuitively know is that the spring would tend to pull it back into its normal rest position with a certain force. And this force is also often called the restorative force because what the spring is trying to do is to restore its normal position. And as you pull the mass further to the right, the spring elongates further and this restorative force increases further. So in a way, more the pull, more the displacement of the box to the right, more the force exerted by the spring to the left. So the displacement is to the right while the force in the spring is to the left. So this force is very often given by the formula F is equal to minus Kx where K is the spring constant and it is a measure of stiffness of the spring. So larger the value of the constant, more the force with which it will pull back the mass. And X is the displacement of the mass to the right or left. And therefore you can see that this force has a linear relationship with the displacement. So the negative sign indicates that the force always acts in a direction opposite to the displacement. So when you move the mass to the right, you know that the spring will pull the mass to the left. Likewise, if you push the box to the left, the spring gets compressed, but in the process, the spring will start pushing the mass to the right. So again, the force and displacement are in opposite directions. What you would also see is that when you are pulling the box to the right, the spring is pulling the mass to the left, and therefore, the spring force is doing negative work on the mass. Another way of looking at it is that when you start pulling from left to right, the velocity would tend to reduce because the force acting in the left direction is going on increasing. So the kinetic energy of the mass keeps reducing. So that's another way of saying that the spring is doing negative work on the mass or taking out the energy from the mass. So this equation was given by a British scientist, Robert Hooke, in the late 1600s. And to understand it better, let's say this was the position of the mass at rest. So this is zero position and let's say it's pulled to position x over here. So the force on the mass at this point would be minus kx. So let us say you had pulled the mass to a distance of let us say 2 meters to the right. So we can say that the force acting on the mass is equal to minus let us say the spring constant is 4 Newton per meter. So if the displacement is 2 meters, what you get is the force is equal to minus 8 Newton. So you can see that while the displacement was positive 2 meters, the force acting is minus 8 Newton. Likewise, you could say, let us say if the spring was compressed by the mass in this direction and let's say the displacement was minus 0.5 meters, we can say that the force acting on the mass on account of the spring is equal to minus 4 newtons per meter multiplied by minus 0.5 meter displacement. And this therefore equals 2 newton. So in this case, again, the displacement is in the negative direction while the force due to the spring is in the right direction. So again, they're opposing each other. So that's so that takes us to the next question. How do we find the work done by this force, the spring force on the mass, considering that the force is variable? It's, it's a function of x. It's a linear function of x and it is constantly changing. So how do we find the work done on the mass? To find this, let's once again consider the box which has been pulled to the right to a distance of let's say xn. And let us say we divide this entire displacement xn into small sections, very small sections, each of length 
let us say delta x so this is our first delta x and let's say at this delta x the displacement is x1 then we have another delta x and the displacement now becomes x2 then we have another delta x and by now the displacement has become x3 and so let us say it keeps increasing here we have x5 and these delta x keep adding up till you reach xn and this also is delta x so each of the sections you are seeing are delta x in length so now consider that the mass is now at x5 at a certain point of time and we also know that as the mass is moving to the right the force on it is constantly increasing so let us say when it was at x1 the force acting was f1 and then the force increased to f2 then the force increased to f3 and let us say at f5 the force acting on the mass was f5 the value of the force was f5 now given these facts that the force at this point is acting in this direction and its value is f5 and that the displacement here this value is delta x what we can do is we can find the work done in displacing this mass by a distance delta x when the force acting on it is f5 although you can see that this force f5 actually increases as this distance increases by delta x but we assume that delta x is so small that f5 hardly changes if we assume this we can find the delta work done delta work done when the mass moves this distance delta x and the force acting on it is f5 in the left direction so this work done would be the dot product of force f5 dot delta x and you can see since both are acting in opposite direction del delta x displacement is to the right while the force f5 is to the left the angle between the two vectors is 180 degrees and cos of 180 will be minus 1 so delta work would be nothing but equal to minus f5 delta x now this is the work done in this section so if we can find the work done delta work done in each of the sections and we add up the work done in each of these sections we'll get to know the total work done when the mass moves from point 0 to point xn so what we are essentially saying is that work done is equal to minus f1 delta x minus f2 delta x minus f3 delta x and so on and so forth till it reaches its last point and we say let's say the force here is let's say the force here is fn at its last point so at the last point the work done would be minus fn delta x so we can write this in a mathematical notation that the work done is sigma or the summation of minus f delta x now if you use integral calculus and we say that the limit of delta x tends to zero what it converts to is that the work done is equal to integral of minus f dx as x changes from zero to x n value and this therefore equals integral of zero to x n and f can be expressed as kx as per this equation since we've already taken care of the sign we'll not put a negative sign again so this will be simply minus kx dx and you if you integrate it what you get is this is equal to minus half k x n square or in a more general way if the displacement is x you can say that the work done is equal to half kx squared.